So it's P Ridge for the Hatchet Boys. Uh, yeah, so today I'm going to be uh, reviewing and discussing Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. <laughs> the Night Nobody Cave Home. Oh man, that's a great tagline. I like that one. Uh, yeah, so uh, Season of the Witch is a 1982 uh, science fiction horror film. And uh, the third installment in the Halloween film series. <laughs> it is the first film to be uh, written and directed by uh, Tommy Lee Wallace. Uh, yeah, uh, he also directed uh, the 1990 uh, it, uh, TV series, uh, which is pretty good. I, I always enjoyed it. Uh, the second uh, half of that film, it's, it kind of declines a little bit, but I mean, it's a good movie. I always loved it. Uh, so yeah, uh, Tommy Lee Wallace uh, directs, this, he, read it, he wrote it and he directed John Carpenter and Deborah Hill. Uh, the creators of Halloween and Halloween 2 uh, returned as producers. Uh, Halloween 3, the only entry in the series that does not feature uh, the antagonist, Michael Myers. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I was a kid, I was so pissed off about that. Oh, man. I didn't understand. Like, where the fuck is Michael Myers? I was so pissed. But anyways, uh, after the film's disappointment, uh, reception at the box office performance. Michael Myers was brought back six years later at Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the film departs from the slasher genre of the other installments instead featured a witchcraft theme with science fiction aspects. Uh, John Carpenter and Deborah He'll believe that Halloween series could have been an anthology series if they kept it going. I mean, that's interesting. Like, I I would like to see that, man. Uh, them coming up with uh, more and more uh, crazy uh, stories. And if they uh, kept it hat and feel too, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, so... Yeah, their anthology series would have, uh, like, been around Halloween night for each story. Uh, with each sequel contained its own character sentence and storyline, director Wallace stated there were uh, many ideas for Halloween-themed films, some which could have potentially created another dumber of their own sequels and that season of the witch was meant to be the first one. Yeah, fucking too bad they didn't keep going with that. That's cool. So on October 23rd, 1982 in uh, Northern California, shop owner uh, Harry Gribridge, uh, it's like, a, got a, he's, Clench it on to like a jack o' lantern uh, Halloween mask. And, uh, and there's like uh, these mysterious men in suits chasing after him. I was like the men in black <laughs> chasing after him. Uh, so Harry's taken to the. Well, alright, so. Uh, the old guy, he collapses at the shop of uh, Walter Jones, who calls for help. Harry is taken to the hospital and placed in care of Dr. Daniel uh, Chalice. Dr. Chalice, played by Tom motherfucking Atkins, the man, the myth, the legend, the pimp. Fucking <laughs> Dr. Chalice. An alcoholic doctor who has a strained relationship with his wife and two children. 
Yeah, he just wants to drink his beer and fuck your woman. <laughs> That's all he gives a fuck about, man. That's all he cares about. Yeah, so... <laughs> As the movie goes on. Yeah, it's it's pretty funny. So later that night, uh, Harry's murdered by another uh, man in black, like a suited man. Uh, that's a good scene. He like fucking destroys this guy's face, like snaps his fucking nose and just like really fucks up uh, uh, Harry Crambridge's face. Uh, and the sound effects too of the crunching, it's it's great. I like it. <laughs> yeah, so then uh, after uh, the, the guy in the suit uh, crunches the, like <laughs> Harry's face, uh, the bag walks to his car and pours gas all over him and lights a fucking match and the car explodes and then everybody's like running out of the hospital. Uh, Dr. Chalice runs out and sees this happen in the parking lot. It's fucking, it's great seed. Uh, and that's just the start of the film. Yeah, like when it opens and you see, uh, uh, Harry getting chased by these men in black, like, uh, you're like, what the fuck's going on? I love it. If, yeah, you don't know what's going on. It just brings a lot of suspense to it, I think. And, uh, so, after identifying his body, uh, Harry's daughter, Ellie, meets Daniel to talk about the suspicious uh, suspicious events surrounded Harry's death. Uh, they decide to investigate and travel to uh, Santa Maria, California, hometown, to the Silver Shamrock Novelties Factory, which made the Halloween mask that Harry carried that night of his death. As they check into a motel, <laughs> da uh, Daniel alerts that Harry had stayed there in the past. So yeah, that's just his thing. I don't even think he gives a fuck about what's going on. He just wants to fuck this younger lady, <laughs> Ellie. I think he just wants to go away for the weekend, get a motel room, get drunk as fuck, and fuck Ellie. <laughs> that's all he cares about. And uh, it's funny when he's talking to his wife <laughs> on the phone. And uh, his wife's played by uh, Nancy Loomis, <laughs> like Andy from the first film. Uh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> I, I get a fucking kick out of this movie, man. Like Dr. Chalice. <laughs> So then, anyways, uh, as they check into the motel, uh, Daniel alerts that Harry had stayed there in the past, right? So Marge Gutman, another motel customer, discovers a microchip on the back of the uh, medallion of one of the masks. Uh, yeah, Marge. Uh, it's Tom Atkins' his, uh, wife at the time in this movie. So she's like fucking around with the bed dallied. Uh, and uh, this like energy beam goes uh, right in her mouth. And it's like, oh man, right, it's a great scene. Uh, for the special fact of that, it's not the worst for the time, 1982, but Oh man, I, I like this scene. It's it's great, and so it's like fucking killing her. And uh, Ellie in the other room is like, "Did she hear something?" And uh, Chalice is like, "Who cares?" Because he's like fucking in bed with Ellie, and they're like basically fucking now. Like he's he's like uh, kissing her, getting her all horned up, and, and she hears the sound of. 
barge in the other room, like fucking dying. <laughs> it's just like you hear something, he's like, who cares? <laughs> I fucking love it. It's his wife <laughs> in real life. <laughs> oh man, it's so funny ass yeah, shit. And, uh, so her face is, like, uh, left, like, a like, all fucked up, like, mutated, like, uh, mangled the fuck. And insects crawls out of her mouth. So shortly after, uh, uh, bedded lab coats take Marge's body away in a silver shamrock van. And Daniel uh, overhears the factory uh, technicians uh, describe it a uh, misfire. Uh, the factory owner, uh, Curl uh, Cochran. Now, Curl Cochran, man, this is one fucking badass fucking uh, like villain we get in this film, man. Yeah. It's the factory owner. So while Daniel and Ellie uh, tour the factory the following morning, Ellie finds her father's car. Uh, but that is, it's guarded by uh, more men in suits who stop her from getting closer to it. They attempt to call the authorities as they flee, but uh, Daniel cannot uh, reach anyone outside of the town by phone. Ellie's kidnapped and taken to the factory. It's 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 great, man. So uh, after Ellie's uh, kidnapped, uh, Daniel follows and is uh, captured by the men in uh, suits, as revealed to be a fucking android, like a robot, man. And when he kills one of them, it's like fucking frozen orange juice coming out of him. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. I love it. So, what are these, like these androids are like uh, created by Cochrane. And yeah, I mean, there's quite a few twists in this film. And, and they're, they're all good. They're all good twists. I like them. So, uh, Cochrane takes Daniel to the final process and control room. It re reveals his plan, the microchip. Uh, each mask contains a fragment of uh, Stonehenge. So yeah, throughout this film, there's like a news stories on the TV about uh, uh, someone stole, like one of the Stonehenge uh, uh, rocks, like statues. And uh, Cochran's use of the piece of 
the stout hedge. Uh, I put the uh, the masks like <laughs> so. Yeah, and uh, in this movie, yeah, throughout this whole f movie, like there's an ad on the TV about silver shamrocks, uh, uh, giving away a uh, like this surprise on Halloween night. So get your masks and oh man, for the big giveaway. But the fucking saw, man, it drives me fucking nuts. It's like, dee, 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 dee. oh, fuck. It's like, two birthdays to Halloween. Oh, man, so fucking annoying. Uh, so, yeah, uh, upon viewing the big giveaway commercial, the microchips on the masks activate, killing the uh, uh, this little kid, like, uh, this family was, uh, at the factory getting a tour to, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, this kid and his family are, like, in this room waiting for, like, this big giveaway that Cochran's, like, uh, tell them that it's gonna, they're get, that they're going to get, and, uh, so the kid has his pumpkin mask on, and the the uh, masks look great. I like them. Uh, the skull, the pumpkin, and the witch. Yeah, they're they're great looking masks. But anyways, so uh, the microchip is activated. Now uh, the sun's going off, and uh, and this kid's died. It's like giving him like severe brain damage and releasing a swarm of insects and snakes that kill like anybody near and it kills his parents too. But it's awesome, like uh, special and visual effects in the scene, like uh, a practical effect of the kid's face, like melted with like, his mask, like the pumpkin on his face. It's great, I love this. Yeah, it's definitely my favorite scene in this movie. Uh, yeah, for sure. And anyway, so the boy and the fuck and his parents are dead. <laughs> and uh, Cochran locks uh, uh, locks Daniel in a room and puts one of the masks on and explains his plan to uh, uh, resurrect each of. Uh, rituals from his uh, native Celtic lands and uh, sacrificing children at Sam Hay, the pagan celebration of the coming winter. Uh, Daniel escapes his bonds and rescues uh, Ellie. He sneaks it to a control room and activates the commercial on the screens and pours 
a box of medallions from uh, the sealed rafter, killing everybody. Uh, <clears throat> and then the Stonehenge, uh, like a, yeah, the Stonehenge, like stone statue thing, uh, kills Cochran and a massive fire destroys the factory as they flee. Uh, Daniel is attacked by Ellie. This whole time, she was a fucking robot. <laughs> it's like, what? But, I mean, that's the twist we get at the end of the movie. Well, like, another one. Another twist. Uh, it's just like, what? She was a robot this whole fucking time? Dude, you fucked a robot. <laughs> a fucking hot robot, man. Anyways, uh, so, oh, she wasn't, okay, yeah, she was just a replacement, so, okay, so I see what, so we don't know what happened to the real Ellie, man, she must have died, so, but the android was a replacement. <laughs> okay, I thought she was just a fucking robot the whole time. Uh, which he destroys after a struggle and a car crash. Uh, he flees off foot to Walter's shop and uh, uh, contacts uh, the television networks attempting to stop the commercial for broadcast. It, but he fails with the third... Uh, uh, television uh, station uh, despite screaming into the telephone uh, playing them to stop he's like stop 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 oh man it's awesome it's fucking awesome I love it like uh, this whole film it comes off like 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 uh, something you would see like in a creep show like a uh, one of their stories, The Creep Show. It does. Uh, but it's like a, a full length movie. Uh, this, and I love, yeah, I really enjoy this movie. I do. Uh, there's a lot of great, memorable scenes in this movie. Like at the first, when the bandit suits, the man in black are chasing after Harry. That's great. And, uh, and when uh, Harry's uh, face gets crushed in the hospital and the man in black sets himself on fucking fire. <laughs> That's great to see. Uh, the boy wear the pumpkin mask and fucking <laughs> how he dies. That was great. Uh, just like the whole Dr. Chalice, like, fucking alley they did the hotel room. Like, it's it's hilarious. Uh, yeah, it, uh, throughout this movie, uh, Dr. Chalice is at a bar and on the TV. There's, like, a, a Halloween uh, trailer played. It's going to be on TV Halloween night or something. Uh it's like, it's a classic. <laughs> and, yeah, so uh, it was cool. And then when uh, Chalice is in the room tied up, uh, <clears throat> the Halloween uh, movie uh, is played on the TV. So it's it's cool. It's, it's a cool throwback. Uh, I like that. I always like that. Well, like, when I was younger, I, I did not like this fucking movie at all. I was like, fuck this movie. Where the fuck is Michael? That was my first impression when I saw this movie as a kid. And I was pissed. But I bought this at a flea market, thinking that we're going to get this epic fucking continuation of Halloween 2. I was like, man, he fucking burnt to death, I thought. But there's a third one? All right, fucking awesome. So I go home and watch it, and I was like, where the fuck is Michael? I remember, I was pissed. 
Then I'd like just fast forward this whole fucking movie uh, right to the end. And I was like, oh man, there's no fucking Michael. But as a kid, I saw that uh, scene with the kid with the pumpkin mask on. And I had to watch it. I was like, oh man, this is fucking awesome. Like just that scene. And then for years, I, I would never watch this movie until I got like older, like a teenager that I... I started liking it, like I started appreciating it for it. Yeah, I I really like it. And you get like uh, the music uh, score by like John Carpenter and Alan Howard. I was like, fuck it, it's great uh, music score. Uh, Yeah, so, uh, I mean, the acting's not horrible, and it's not that great, but Tom Atkins is the one who, like, holds this whole fucking movie together, for sure. Yeah, so, and it's like Dr. Chalice, man, he's awesome. So, yeah, he's my favorite character, for sure. Uh, and uh, Colonel Cockridge, uh, his character, man, his character is... Pretty badass, man. Like, he just wants to fucking kill kids <laughs> on Halloween night. Like, every kid in the world. So, like, uh, I like that concept of, like, uh, say I paid, like, the pagan uh, ritual uh, to please the gods or whatever. It's cool. It's like the kids are the sacrifice. It's a cool uh, uh, concept. But yeah, I really like it. Uh, yeah, uh, Colonel Cochran, he's good too. I like him. Uh, he definitely uh, played his role like well. I think like a evil sick bastard. <laughs> yeah, he did a good job. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, good a cameo of uh dick warlock in this film he's one of the uh men's in suit at the first of the film uh the guy who pours all the gas on himself and sets the best self on fire uh yeah that's dick warlock of uh, yeah i mean overall there's not really too many other characters in this film that like like I was saying, uh, storyline, the concept is great. I love it. Uh, it stepped away from Michael. And it's a, yeah, it's a good movie. I like it. Um, and it, it just gets crazier as this movie goes on. It gets fucking crazier and crazier. Which I like. I like that. Um, yeah. Uh, the cinematographer is Dean Cuddy again. He's great. I like him. Uh, yeah, the edited was fine. Uh, there wasn't anything really that drag too long of this film. Uh, yeah, it just, it looks like a Carpenter film for sure. Um, yeah, so, I mean, Tommy uh, Lee Wallace did a good job directing this. I think so. Because it really does seem like a John Carpenter film. Um, yeah, it looks like one. Sounds like what well, he does the music. Yeah, the music is great. Like I was saying, uh, the sound, uh, some of the sound effects are pretty cool. I like it. Uh, like the set design too. Uh, yeah, like I do like. How that town seems like it's like, like this weird Twilight Zone fucking episode. Like the town, it just seems like a 
ghost town. It, it seems like everybody's controlled by cock. It, it's cool and because they have a curfew. And the girl comes over on the PA about the curfew. It's uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's voice, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Uh, yeah, the factory was was pretty decent. I mean, just like a factory, but that set design was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, the colors of this film. Uh, yeah, they were good. Yeah, it just, just seems like a Carpenter film, for sure. Yeah, the special effects were great too. Uh, yeah, they're pretty good. I like the, uh, like the uh, special effects effects with the practical effects of the of the scene there where uh, that girl's face gets zapped that was cool and the kids uh, wear the pumpkin mask that was cool too I, I like that so special effects artist Don Post uh, of Post Studios designed the latex masks in the film which included a glow in the dark skull a live green uh, witch and orange uh, day glow jack o lanterns. Uh, yeah, the masks are great. Uh, that special effects, like for, for the masks, it's fucking awesome. I like that. The practical effects in that, yeah. At the atmosphere of this movie, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, it does feel like a Halloween movie for sure. I like it. Yeah, uh, there's some scenes with some good suspense that build up. Of uh, yeah, they're they're decent. Uh, good booted atmosphere for sure. Um, so yeah, most of this film took place on location in the small coastal town of. Uh, Loletta, California. Uh, familiar foods, a milk bottle and plant in uh, that town served as the Silver Shamrock uh, novelties factory, but all special effects involving fire, smoke, and explosions were filmed at uh, Post Studios. Huh, that's cool. I, I feel like this movie uh, reminds me of like a Twilight Zone uh, episode for sure. Um, and I think that's what they were going for too. Like that, and uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Don Siegel's uh, Invasion of the Body Statues. Yeah, it kind of comes off like a science fiction film, like that. It's cool. The budget was $4.6 million. Uh, yeah, kind of big for this film, I find. Uh, and it only made uh, $40.4 million. <laughs> well, it made its money back at like $14 million more. So it, it didn't lose out, but it didn't do well. Like, like really good. But it did do good. Uh, yeah. I recommend this movie. I do. Uh, yeah. Uh, I would have to say it's probably like my fourth favorite uh, Halloween movies out of the Halloween uh, franchise for sure. And uh, I give this movie a uh, seven and a half, a solid seven and a half for me. Uh, it's fun to watch every once in a while. It definitely around Halloween uh, time. It's a, it's a great Halloween movie to put on around Halloween. Yeah, I really enjoy it. Yeah, so that's uh, 
my review for uh, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. And, uh, yeah, so feel free to uh, subscribe and like and share. And, uh, yeah, so uh, become a subscriber to my channel. And uh, every week uh, we watch, like, usually... Uh, like three to four movies a, a week usually most of the times and uh so yeah we do watch a lot and uh i'll try what's what's about uh to do uh trivia or some kind of fun game uh yeah so that's my review for halloween three all right thanks for uh watching everybody see you next time bye